Hey everybody, my name is Ash and I'm a veterinary student. Today we're going to learn a little bit about the stomach and I'm gonna go over some of the main anatomical features of the stomach and try to make a clear and concise video about some of the main takeaways about the stomach. Specifically, we're going to focus on the stomach of the carnivore. And what's important to know when we're working with any stomach is figuring out what species we're working with really. So if we're talking with the carnivore, we're going to have a simple stomach. And simple means that they only have one compartment in the stomach. There's lots of species that also have this simple stomach, such as horses, pigs, but then there's other species that have complex stomachs. And these stomachs have more than one compartments. So these species are animals like cows, goats, sheep, typically any ruminant is going to have a complex stomach. The next breakdown that we do is we look to see, okay, if we have one stomach compartment, is the entire stomach made of one type of mucosa or epithelial lining, or is there different types of cells or different regions in the stomach that are made up of different cells that basically make up the entire mucosal lining of the stomach and give it its function. So what we do is we look and see, is it a simple, simple stomach? And so if it's a simple, simple, that means that it's one type of glandular region in the stomach. So this would just be a simple glandular stomach. Or are we dealing with a composite stomach. And if it's composite, there's going to be glandular parts and non-glandular parts. And I'll just write non-gland. Okay, and this is the same with the complex stomachs. So we would also have a breakdown of simple and composite. But for today, we're talking about the stomach of carnivores. So let's focus on simple stomach with one compartment and simple with one gland or one glandular mucosa. So give me a second. I'm going to clear up this page and we'll get a stomach started for you guys. Okay, so we're going to talk about the stomach of carnivores in this video in particular. So first I'm going to draw a outline of the stomach of a carnivore. So this will be the opening of the stomach. We'll have this bean-shaped belly that kind of comes into the opening of the small intestine. Great. So first things first, let's divide the stomach based on the basic parts of the stomach. So the first thing we're going to have is a cardiac region. The cardiac region is the first part that we're going to work with in the stomach. Every species is going to have a cardiac region and we call it the cardiac region because it is close to the heart. So they kept it simple for us. Cardiac. Okay, the next part we're going to have is the fundus of the stomach. The fundus is really where these different gastric glands are going to start uh, in, in the glandular stomach. So we'll have a lot going on in the fundus. The third part is going to be the corpus. This is the next region of the stomach. And in carnivores, it's actually quite similar to the fundus. It also has lots of glands in the uh, epithelium that are going to be producing gastric enzymes. So we have the fundus and the last and final part of the stomach is going to be the pylorus. This is the ending of the stomach. Every species that we work with in veterinary medicine is going to have these four major parts of the stomach, but they can vary from species to species. 
So let's kind of start with the story of the food entering the stomach and make our way towards the food leaving the stomach. For the food to get into the stomach, it has to go from the mouth down the esophagus into the, the cardiac region or the opening of the stomach. So here we'll label this as the esophagus. Great. And food is good. Oh. Yeah. Let's bring that back. Great. So food is going to go from the mouth down the esophagus and into the stomach. Okay. So in order for it to actually get into the stomach, it has to pass a really important muscle. And I'll put this in blue. This muscle is going to basically control the flow of food going from the esophagus into the stomach, as well as avoid food going from the stomach back into the esophagus. The, the food, once it gets into the stomach, it's going to be coated in different acids, and it's not really nice to have the stomach acids getting into the esophagus, so the body has a system to protect it against that. So this muscle that's circular and at the opening of the stomach, we'll call number five. This muscle is going to be called the cardiac sphincter muscle. Not every species has this, and we'll talk about that when we talk about the stomach and ruminants, but for sure, the carnivores, horses, pigs, they all are going to have this cardiac sphincter muscle. So now the food has entered into the stomach, it's past this cardiac region, the opening of the stomach, and it's made it to the bulk of the stomach in this area, in the fundus. So now we're kind of in the fundus. The food is also falling into this corpus region. And basically, the glandular tissue that we have here, and I'll maybe draw this in brown as well, is going to be full of these gastric pits. So generally, it's pretty flat, but there's going to be folds of the stomach epithelium. Great. So we'll have these linings of the stomach with these gastric pits. And these gastric pits are going to be full of little cells in the mucosa here that are going to produce different types of enzymes, different acids, in order to allow this digestive function of the stomach to break down and use the chemicals in order to assist the intestines in getting what's really important from the food into the blood. So basically, these gastric enzymes that are released, they're going to come from two different cells. We won't really talk about this here. There's actually several cells in these gastric pits. But here, what we'll talk about is basically these cells are going to release enzymes into the lumen of the stomach. The stomach is going to use the enzymes in the different acidic environment mucus that is produced. And mix that with the food and get the food ready to make its way into the small intestine where the small intestine is going to further uh, basically break down the food with the help of the liver and the pancreas. So for the purposes of this video, let's keep going. We have the food, it's made it to this pyloric part, sorry, the, uh, the corpus, and now it's going towards the pyloric part of the stomach. Once it's in the pyloric region, there's going to actually be another muscle here, and this muscle is going to be basically in charge of the, the exit of the stomach. And we'll call this, very similar to the other one, the pyloric sphincter muscle. It's both in charge of food leaving the stomach into the small intestine, and also responsible for avoiding the backflow of food from the intestine into the stomach. So basically, this at this point, the food is going to leave and enter the small intestine or the duodenum. That'll be the first part of the small intestine. A couple of things that we should point out with the stomach is that the stomach is going to have this mesothelial lining on both the top and the bottom that's going to secure the stomach to the surrounding structures. So on the top, we're gonna to have what we call the lesser omentum. And this is gonna be a double layer of mesothelium that's going to secure 
the top of the stomach, both to the liver that's above the stomach, and also extend towards the dorsal abdominal cavity. Uh, while at the lower end of the stomach, we're going to have the greater omentum. And this will be much longer than this lesser omentum on the top. The greater omentum is going to reach down to the spleen, but also extend much further and drape over the entire small intestines and into the towards the large intestines. And clinically, it's really important to help with surgery to avoid any type of adhesion when you're working with surgeries in the abdominal cavity. So these two things are really important. Really, that's about it for the stomach. Um, next thing I'm going to do is basically I'll clean this up and we'll talk about blood supply really quickly. And that's it for this video. Future videos, we'll talk about some of the other species that we work with. Okay, so let's move the stomach over to the side and we'll talk about the blood supply really quickly. So let's bring this, make it a little smaller, shift it down here. Don't forget the opening that we left up here. Let's attach that back on. Good enough. So here's our stomach. So the stomach is getting its main blood supply from the abdominal aorta, which is going to be running caudally from the where the heart is sitting in the thorax. So we're going to have this abdominal aorta. I'll try to draw it bigger because it's a big vessel. So we'll call this abdominal aorta. The abdominal aorta is actually going to, at this point, once it gets near the stomach, it's going to give a branch coming off the stomach. So we'll keep this guy going. And this branch, I'll label these all to the side here. We'll call this number one. This branch is going to be the celiac artery. Okay, and the celiac artery is going to bring this oxygen-rich blood in towards the stomach. But before it can do that, it's going to give off its own branches. So the first branch it's going to give is the splenic artery. We'll call this number two. Number three, it's going to give off the left gastric artery. So we'll draw that maybe. This will be two. Left gastric artery will come off as well. And it's going to supply parts of the stomach. And then the next blood supply that we're going to see, call this, sorry, call this three. The next blood supply that we'll see coming off the celiac artery is going to be the hepatic artery. The hepatic artery is going to come off. It's going to give a branch to go towards the liver. So we'll call this the hepatic branch. But then it's also going to give off this other branch that we're going to actually call the right gastric artery. So this right gastric artery is going to come in here and it's going to supply the, the right of the stomach. And it's going to connect actually right here. We're going to have connection of this left and right gastric artery and they're going to form what we call an anastomosis, where the, the two blood vessels are going to merge together. So that will be, let's label this number, hepatic artery is going to be number four. Then we will have, off of the hepatic artery, we will have the right gastric artery. The last thing that we're going to see coming off of the hepatic artery is going to actually be 
a further extension as we keep going down, we're going to have this right gastric epi, the right gastric epiploic artery. Sorry, that one always gets me confused when I read that one. So the right gastric epiploic artery is going to come down. It's going to supply the bottom of the stomach here. So we'll call this number, this one was five, this one we'll call number six. Great. So this will supply the bottom of the stomach. You'll notice how the blood vessels in the stomach, there's really none that are supplying directly the sides of the stomach. They're either coming from the top or the bottom. So clinically, when you make an incision, you're going to be approaching the stomach from the sides because there isn't really a lot of blood supply here. So you don't have to worry about damaging or really it's a less risky operation if you don't have to go in where the major blood supply is coming. Now, this splenic artery, it's also number two over here. It's also going to extend further after it reaches the spleen and it's going to supply this left base of the stomach and of course these two arteries are going to meet and also form an anastomosis down here. So this one we'll call number seven. This will be the left gastric epiploic artery. Okay so maybe just this picture a little nicer we will have the spleen and the dog somewhere here and this will have branches of the splenic artery branching into the spleen of the dog supplying this continuing down going towards this number seven that we called the left gastric epiploic artery and then finally supplying this base of the stomach here Okay, making an anastomosis with this right gastric epiploic artery. And that's basically the supply of the stomach.